Shalom Chavarim and welcome to Seeking Truth in Torah with Aliyah and I am looking forward to this teaching as it's part of the Bible Bites series and so today I've entitled this teaching Making Space for Sabbath Grace and it's a strange title but it's something that rings absolutely true in our life and I know that perhaps many of you have already been keeping the Sabbath, the seventh day Sabbath according to the word and maybe some of you haven't and you're just seeking and searching for that truth about the Sabbath day and I want to say that there's become a lot of interest in the I don't know how to really put it in this idea of Sabbath a lot of people have been writing a lot of books about this idea of bringing Sabbath into your life but not really understanding that this Sabbath is a specific day there's a specific day for the Sabbath that we need to keep that's why it's called the Sabbath you can't just choose a Sabbath for yourself but today's teaching is about why we need to make space for the Sabbath and what exactly the father told us to do regarding the Sabbath he gives us very specific words used in his word that we need to look at so that we can know why we need to make space for the Sabbath so I just want to start off with just praying father I just pray today father for your peace and for your joy in our hearts father no matter what we are currently facing in our life or no matter how we feel father today i pray that your rest and peace would just come and live inside of our hearts and lives and father whatever you want to be said in this teaching today father i pray that you are leading god and that it will minister to the very hearts of those who are listening and i just pray a blessing over them peace and grace in the name of messiah yeshua amen so let's get into it we know Firstly, that Yahweh spent six days creating the most beautiful objects that we would ever see. Right in the beginning, we are told that Yahweh created the earth in six days. He created the water, the sky, land, flowers, plants and trees and animals. And he looked at it all and proclaimed that it was good. He actually said it was very good. And Father smiled at his creation. Then he rolled up his sleeves and breathed into the dust of the earth. And from the sand popped a man. Papa was even more pleased and then he breathed harder and deeper and the man started breathing and the man became a living being. And then God brought the animals to this man so that even as small as the man was in this great big universe that Father had created, he had the great privilege of getting to name every single animal and after that we know that he named all of them and then he suddenly pointed at himself and realized there was no one else like him so Yahweh knew exactly what he was going to do the man fell into a beautiful peaceful sleep and from his side out Yahweh created this woman and he created something that was priceless and beautiful something that was equal to him just as a side note the Hebrew says that Yahweh brought the woman forth from his side it's not a rib it's the side of man so she came out of that place and then when he awoke he saw her and they were together in this perfect world in this holy space where they were just to walk and be with father and the beautiful thing about this was that they were standing in a place that was absolutely perfect and after creating all the beauty of the world the galaxies and the universe father had one more thing in mind because the earth it is it's a great place it's a holy place but it needs to be governed by holy time I'm going to say that again. It needs to be governed by holy time. The place that Adam and Eve first inhabited was, was holy. It was a sacred space and it needed something to govern it and that was time, a holy time. So God placed the man and the woman in the garden, brought them together right before the sun set on the sixth day. Then he placed them on the cusp of the Sabbath on the seventh day. Now don't you think that's really, really interesting? The Father creates the world in six days. He doesn't make man on the first day, the second day, the third, the fourth. He doesn't make man until the very, very last day of his creating work. So he puts man and woman, he puts them together on the cusp of the seventh day. He basically places them at the end of the sixth day. And then he says, the seventh day is the seventh day of rest. 
Let's look at that scripture, what it says. Genesis 2, 2-3. It says, By the seventh day God had finished the work that he had been doing. So on the seventh day he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and he made it holy because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he himself had done. So right from the very beginning, Genesis 2, the second chapter of the Bible, we are taught about the importance of holy time, of, of sanctified time. Yahweh set aside a very, very specific day. He blessed that day. It is the Sabbath day. It's a specific day in time. He blessed it. He made it holy. And then he gave it to mankind so that they may learn to sanctify their own time and he didn't put Adam and Eve somewhere else he put them here and this is actually a picture for our own lives the world has become this place where people just work 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 they work in order to rest so people work we at this time in the year where it's November and I can just sense and feel and see how people are working. Here in South Africa, we have our big holidays in December, January. That's our summer holidays. And that's when people go away. They spend time with family. But when it gets to October, November, it's this time of year where everyone is really tired. But they're still trying to get done what they need to do so that they can hustle for the, re for the rest of November and a bit of December w until all the doors close and the businesses shut so that they can go on holiday and the roads get busy and every year in January unfortunately the government is counting the amount of people that have died on our roads because of the hustle because of the stress and because of people rushing to get to their holidays and guess what people go on holiday and they come back and they go I need a holiday from a holiday and this is what people do they work in order to rest but here father places mankind on on the threshold of the sabbath and i believe that that should teach us something it should teach us that we rest so that we can work we should be resting deeply so that the rest has become the first thing that we do and because of the deep rest we have within us and around us we can apply ourselves to our work. Have you ever felt that in your own life? I know I have felt it. Many times I sit down to do something and when I'm, I'm stressed about it and when I don't have peace and rest inside of me, I create a hash of something that I'm trying to perfect. And this is what Father is saying to us. The world was a perfect place. We needed to just rest and enjoy. And obviously we know Adam and Eve, they sinned and they were cast out of the garden. Uh, but life still needed to be fashioned according to the tool that Father gave us. And the tool that he gave us to sanctify our time is the Sabbath day. This is the very first time we read of the Sabbath. And it's so important to mankind's lifestyle to sanctify the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. So let's fast forward time. We know that we fast forward and we are here standing. This is the tabernacle, the picture in the back. We stand in the wilderness when Israel left the iron furnace of Egypt. There was no rest and there was no peace. We don't know if they kept the Sabbath. The rabbis do say that the, the children of Israel fell into such a spiritual disillusionment that they began to actually become defiled because they weren't listening. So who knows if they keep the Sabbath day. We need to know that even though the commandments were not yet given when they were in Egypt, there was a revelation of a lot of the commandments, a lot of the Torah. They did keep the Sabbath. The Sabbath was given right in the beginning and it's a huge part of our worship. So I encourage you to read Exodus 31 to 35 because these ch chapters, they actually detail the intricate details of building the tabernacle in the wilderness. Again, the tabernacle in the wilderness is was a holy space a holy space where worship and meeting Abba Father took place but as the narrative begins in Exodus 31 it begins with a very clear instruction and this is very very important here we see that Father wants to create a space again for people to come and to worship Him. And, and that space was the tabernacle in the wilderness. But just as that tabernacle was being built, He says, He starts off the building with saying, Exodus 31, 16-17, The Israelites are to observe the Sabbath, celebrating it for the generations to come as a lasting covenant. It will be a sign between me and the Israelites forever. For in six days Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day He rested 
and he was refreshed. So on a normal level, we know that he, Father Yahweh is saying to the Israelites, you're going to be building the tabernacle, but I want you to pause that work on the Sabbath. He's keeping on reminding them of the Sabbath day, even in their worship, even in building a holy space to meet with him. He's saying part of what governs that space is keeping the Sabbath day. I want us to look at that Hebrew word for refreshed there because that word for refreshed is very, very important. The Hebrew word for refreshed used in that scripture is a word that means to draw breath from the totality of the being. Father never grows weary or faint. Yet, the scripture tells us that Sabbath brings Yahweh refreshment. How awesome that our Father has given us the pattern of Sabbath so that we too may draw breath. We know because the Bible tells us in Isaiah, it says that Father never grows weary. He never grows faint. But here it says that he's refreshed when he sits back and keeps his own Sabbath. And this is a pattern. Father has given us a pattern, a way of life, a way that we should live. As I said earlier, life has become a hustle, it's become overworking, stress, anxiety, labor, where the small things that, that mean actually nothing in, in the essence of our spiritual walk becomes big things because we have been forced to work, we have been forced to, to make money, we've been forced to build kingdoms that are of this earth, we've been forced to do all these things. The Father doesn't want us to be involved in that. He wants us to be involved in life of Sabbath. So that means that we need to draw breath in the Sabbath day. Have you ever realized, and I know that when I'm under a lot of stress, my chest pulls tight and I struggle, struggle to breathe. And a few months ago, I was going to the physio for an injury that I had. And she was saying she had to teach me how to actually breathe. Not because I'm a stressed out person. I'm actually quite a relaxed person. But she she told me that 90% of the world don't actually know how to breathe. They don't know how to breathe properly because th the lifestyle that we live has become so fast. And our breath, and this is interesting, the breath that we are taking is coming from our chest when it needs to come from our diaphragm. Have you ever thought of that? That is where we truly draw breath and we can only draw breath when we are fully in a place where we learn to draw breath from your diaphragm. So what she did with me was put a belt around my diaphragm and I had to practice breathing in and out from my diaphragm to pull the air deep into my body. She also told me that when you breathe like that, there is a wave of change that happens inside of your brain. So your brain switches into an alpha rhythm inside of your brain and you become more relaxed and your brain unlocks itself from hustle, 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 hustling. And you begin to draw breath not only into your body but into your brain that controls your heart where your emotions flow. So I believe that this was a, a it's a it's a physical level of a spiritual thing. And Father has given us this pattern of Sabbath. So you know why? So that we can begin to learn to draw breath from our spirits that is deep within us and that we can learn that the Sabbath is a place to draw breath. It's a place to rest. It's a place where we are supposed to just relax. And it makes me always think of how many people dismiss the Sabbath day. You know, in Christianity also they've said, oh, keeping the Sabbath, I don't keep the Sabbath, I'm not legalistic. I've had that said so many times. What's more legalistic? You jumping in your car on a Saturday, rushing around the shops when it's super busy, complaining, coming home, rushing lunch, rushing, and then on, s on Sunday morning you sit for two hours in a pew in a church building and then you rush out after it to go back to the shops. Have you had any time to rest? Have you had any time to draw breath? Have you had any time to connect with the Creator? I mean, he you think that He doesn't know better than we do. He knows much better than we do. And what He's also trying to say to us is that holy space, without holy time, without obedience to the time that He has set for us, it's pointless. Even in the building of of the tabernacle it was the units of service in the tabernacle and even in the temple which came later they were 
ordered in a very specific way. They had six units and then a seventh was set aside for the Sabbath day. So even in the midst of the sacrificial services and worship that happened in the tabernacle and in the temple, Sabbath was a huge aspect of the worship and the services were ordered into units so that a specific reality could take place on the Sabbath day. Sabbath is a big big deal and we need to look at it as this big deal that it actually is. And I want to move to the core and foundation of what I actually want to share with you in this little teaching. Exodus 20, we know Exodus 20, it outlines the commandments written on stone that God gave to Moses on Mount Sinai. Most people are familiar with the Sabbath instructions. A lot of people can maybe even quote the Ten Commandments. But for the purpose of this teaching, I want to highlight two messages that come out of the Ten Commandments. Even though people are familiar with the Sabbath instructions, how many people actually keep the Sabbath instructions? Exodus 20 verse 8 to 11 says, Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to Yahweh your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son, your daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner that resides in your towns. How's that? Even the foreigner has to remember the holy Sabbath day of the king. For in six days Yahweh made the heavens and the earth the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and he made it holy. Now here in Exodus 20 it says remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Remember and keep it holy. Remember and keep they both verbs. It means that we must remember it to sanctify it. But look here what happens when we go to Deuteronomy 5. Deuteronomy 5 is where the Ten Commandments, where Moses reminds the people of the Ten Commandments. It's his words being spoken to the people, reminding them of the things that have gone before. And, and this is interesting because in Deuteronomy 5, a different word is used in connection with the Sabbath day. Verse 12 to 15 of Deuteronomy 5 says, Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. As Yahweh your God has commanded you, six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to Yahweh your Elohim. He goes on to say, You don't do no work, let your female slaves rest. Remember you were slaves in Egypt and Yahweh brought you out. Therefore Yahweh your God has commanded you to observe the seventh day Sabbath. This is interesting. This is really interesting because in Exodus 20 it says remember. But in Deuteronomy 5 it says observe. And this is what I want us to talk about today. How do these two words relate? What are they actually telling us about Sabbath observance? Why does Yahweh say remember the Sabbath day and when Moshe repeats it to the people he says observe the Sabbath day. Observe is the Hebrew word shamar, which literally means that you must watch over the day and practically keep it. That's what shamar is telling us. That is what Deuteronomy 5 is telling us. That is what Moshe is telling us. He's saying to us, you need to watch over the Sabbath day, not a Sabbath. You don't choose Wednesday as your day off to relax. He says there is one specific Sabbath and we are to observe it. In other words, you keep it practically. We need to physically keep the Sabbath day but not working on the Sabbath. Rest on the Sabbath. When the sun sets on Friday night, that is your time where you put all work aside and you make it holy by connecting to the great I am by quite simply you keep that day. You keep that day holy by observing it. Now Exodus 20, remember it said, remember the Sabbath day. Now what does this remembering mean? How do we remember the Sabbath day? Exactly like I wrote here, remember the Sabbath day means to always keep it in mind. Make Sabbath part of your life. This is something that Father's so been teaching me. And this is the crux, I believe, of the message of Sabbath teaching. Allow the Sabbath to draw your life into a daily rhythm of resting in God. And I know that that is so difficult for us because we are used to having to make things work. But the rhythm of rest equals the lack of striving. Sabbath is also called the Yom Menucha, the day of rest. Rest within has to become a part of our daily lives. We don't just live for the rest of Sabbath. We make something of rest a part of our 
daily lives. In other words, I hear many Sabbath keepers, they go, oh, I can't wait for Sabbath, can't wait for Friday night because then I can just unload and I and I get that because that's part of the observance that we do we look forward to the Sabbath and we are excited about it but the truth of the matter is that father I believe that in this time that we are living in father is saying I want you to make the rest that I have so freely given you I want you to make rest a part of your life in other words rest doesn't mean that you do nothing. Rest means that you do not strive. So if I'm sitting down to write something, I need to know within my heart that I'm not writing it to finish it. In other, or if you're trying to close a business deal, you need to know that you are not doing it to finish it. You are doing it to be present in it and to learn from it and to, yes, of course, there is always an end goal for everything that we do. But we mankind has become so fixated with the end that they forget that there's a process and that there is a beginning and in everything we can learn. And if I'm sitting writing something with this idea of I just want to get this finished, I will not give my best. I will not put my best foot forward. I will not experience the rest of God. I have a friend who she always says, and she was a big part of teaching me about rest, even though she doesn't keep the Sabbath actually, she has made rest in God a part of her life. And there were many times in my life where I was struggling with things and she would say to me, enter in to a rest. And in the beginning it was very irritating because when someone says to you, enter into a rest, you automatically go, so what am I not resting? But you come to realize that striving, striving is wanting to get something done, wanting to do it perfectly. Sometimes you'll never be able to do it perfectly. Sometimes striving equals fear. You are trying to do something so good because you don't want to fail, because you don't want to be wrong, because you don't want someone else to judge you because all these things and I know that many people I look out at the world and I see striving I see striving in everyday life I see people striving in the kingdom I see people striving in the world because there is a lack of rest within rest within means that you live in a daily rhythm with God and and my last teaching that was about Martha we looked at that scripture where it says that Yeshua came to Martha when her brother Lazarus had passed away. Now the interesting thing about that in John chapter, I think it's John 17, we know that Yeshua receives the word to go and be with Mary and Martha because their brother has passed away. But he stops and he spends two days not going to them and he only arrives there on the fourth day. Now it would seem that he's totally out of time but he's perfectly in time you know why because when you read the life of Yeshua one thing that I've noticed that has really touched me is the fact that f that Yeshua is continually living in the father's time he has this holy time reality about him and we call it Kairos perfect time but it's this being in a daily rhythm and knowing that Yeshua could have rushed there when Lazarus was sick you know, he could have rushed there and prevented Lazarus from dying, but that was not what he knew had to happen. He was living in a daily rhythm, and I want to encourage you today, I encourage myself in this, to live in a daily rhythm of rest. No matter what, it is a process, it is a journey, it is something that we live, and as we unpack, as we unpack, we realize that we need to live in a rest with God. The essence of the Sabbath is the reality that we are not in control. Just like we have to lay down and sleep every night because we are tired, we have to surrender to the rest that we were created to enjoy every week on Friday evening when the sun dims and the day of rest finally settles. Psalm 4 8 says, When I go to bed, I sleep in peace because Yahweh, you keep me safe. When we sleep, it, I believe that sleep is the greatest place of vulnerability because it shows that something else is in control. When you close your eyes and you enter into deep sleep, you realize God is the one that sustains me. He's the one that's going to keep me peaceful at night. And he's the one that's going to give me sleep. And that's the reality of not being in control. 
yes the world teaches us we have to be in control and we have to make money and we have to do this and we have to do that but Yahweh's word says there is no such thing because he himself provides our daily bread he himself gives us the rest that we so desperately long for in our hearts so the canopy of our human existence needs to be ordered by father's time clock his time calendar and our lives should tune into the sabbath clock this is the way that we should live our lives to rest is to surrender not to be broken but to be loved and that is the truth there is a song that i absolutely love and it says this it says where i end that's where you begin and when we end in our lives no matter what we are facing no matter what we are going through no matter what still needs to be done where we end and we have no more and we have no more strength and we have nothing to give we have no way of getting through what we can get through we just end you just say father i can't do it anymore i i'm tired and i need your rest and where you end that's where he only begins and that's that's the message of sabbath rest is to make it part of your life he says cast your cares upon me because i care for you and in that there is perfect rest we don't be anxious about anything but in everything we give it over to him and he lets his peace and rest guard us and that's when our cup overflows and we can rest and be refreshed again i also want to say besides that beauty of sabbath we also know that 1 john 5 2 to 3 says this is how we know that we love the children of god by loving god and carrying out his commands in fact this is love for god to keep his commands and his commands are not burdensome that's a beautiful scripture not so his commands are not burdensome sabbath is not a burden it's not legalistic it's not something that neither you nor i strive to do and i think that that's what many people miss out sabbath is a love gift from god it's something that he has given us so that we can draw breath so we can rest and learn to change our mindset from the things of this world to to thinking about the alpha and omega the aleph and the tav the beginning and the end god who yahweh yeshua who holds everything together in the palm of his hand and he makes the world spin around and he makes our world spin around and the reality the first thing about keeping sabbath is knowing that we are commanded by the king to observe the day you keep it practically and then you are to remember it make it part of your life and so by making it part of your life your life and my life i want to end with telling you a little story that i absolutely love there's a little story about a rabbi long ago that lived long ago named rabbi shemai around about the time of yeshua he was alive and what he used to do was he used to go out in in the day in the normal day and whenever he saw a beautiful candle or a beautiful tunic a beautiful garment or a beautiful um, piece of bread or a piece of food or something beautiful that made him mesmerized he would purchase it and he would take it home and put it away for sabbath and when sabbath would come he would take out and wear that beautiful garment or he would take out those beautiful candles or he would take out the beautiful food and he would share it with those around him and he said this is how i make sabbath a part of my life because i remember it no matter what i'm doing when i'm in the shop when i'm out there in the grocery store wherever i am i'm making sabbath a part of my life and i know that i spent many years in an orthodox synagogue that's a part of my testimony that's beyond this teaching but i spent many years in an orthodox synagogue and the beauty of sabbath was that i would do the same i started to realize it wasn't actually even conscious it was this thing of that sabbath became such a part of my life because that's how the orthodox jews are sabbath is a big deal i mean you prepare the week for sabbath actually and so what ha- used to happen was on shabbat and on the high holy sabbath that's the festival days i would be able to purchase new items and i would keep them for sabbath and and in that time i used to say to my parents oh uh, yom kippur is coming or Sukkot is coming or Pesach is coming the festivals are coming and then I was very blessed when I was living at home my father used to give me money and on the high holy days I would always have new clothes and and the orthodox Jews have actually made that a part of the circle of their life not everyone can afford that I can't afford that now every time I need to buy a new outfit but there is something to be said about that it's about keeping the sabbath in your mind it's about knowing that the sabbath is beautiful and i want to share the beauty of sabbath with others 
And so I pray that rest and peace will become such a daily rhythm and part of your life and that you can live in a rhythm with Abba Father to know that He loves you and that peace is part of the blessing that Yeshua has left us with. And He says that in John 14, He says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. And then He goes on and He says, I leave you with a gift. And that gift is peace of heart and peace of mind. Not as the world gives, but that as I give it to you. Do not let your heart be troubled. Do not be afraid. And so today, that's part of the message of this Sabbath teaching. I'm not trying to convince you when Sabbath is. You can find so much information out there on that particular topic. I just want to share with you what Father's laid in my heart. And that is that Sabbath is necessary to our worship. It's necessary to sanctify a holy space with holy time. And it's necessary to order our time by the rest that God gives us. And let us just close our eyes together. Let us just pray. Father, we just thank you. Thank you so much, Yahweh, that you want us to live in a rest. You want us to live in a peace. You want us to come out of that shell of worry, Father, out of that shell of burden, out of that shell of not knowing what tomorrow will bring, but that you want us to live in this place of rest. And I pray that this week, Father, as we are living our daily lives, that something pure and holy of your rest will come and just be sown and weaved and developed into our hearts father i pray for rest the blessing of rest to be on those who have listened to this teaching father that your peace and rest can encompass those father that are close to your heart as father you give rest to your beloved and i pray that blessing over them today and over my family father and i thank you and i bless you thank you so much for this teaching father we praise you in the mighty name of our king of our savior of our messiah yeshua Amen. And I just want to bless you and say thank you for listening. I pray that you have been inspired and that you have been totally blessed. And with these Bible Bites, what we are doing is saying, hey, if you want to ask us a question or if you want to ask me a question, if you want to ask my husband a question, you can ask us any question by emailing us. The email address is admin at seekingtruthintorah.com. And if you wanted to go to me specifically, because maybe you have a woman's question, then you just need to address it to Alia. If you just wanted to go to us and you just want any of us to answer a question, then you can just say hi and just put your question down. Thank you for joining. Thank you for listening. And I bless you in the wonderful name of Messiah Yeshua. Thank you.